an infant who is born to the mother who is receiving the treatment for bipolar disorder. What is the treatment we give for bipolar? Lithium. So typically in lithium what happens? What is the classical cardiac lesion? Epstein's anomaly. Where the tricuspid valve instead of normally positioned at this level this is called a four chamber view. It is being positioned a little high. So that is called atrialization of ventricle. Ventricle because of this high positioning a part of the ventricle almost become like atria. Atrialization of ventricle is the classical feature and it is the classical Epstein's anomaly is what you need to remember. Now a diabetic mother Diabetic mother history was not given. Eh? Okay. Uh, okay. Uh, you have been shown the 2D echo. What is this called? Atrioventricular canal defect it is called as. See, this is left ventricle, right ventricle, interventricular septum. There is a VSD. Right? Same time, right atrium, left atrium, between the two, what is there? ASD. If the ASD and VSD, both of them are there, then what is it called? Endocardial cushion defect. So, where do you find endocardial cushion defects most commonly? Down syndrome babies, you find the endocardial cushion defects is what you need to remember. <coughs> a six month old child was admitted with respiratory distress. There is a persistent sinosis, parasternal heave, chest x-ray is being shown. What do you see? Boot shaped heart which is classical of tetralogy of fellow. What are the components of tetralogy? Right ventricular hypertrophy, overriding iota, opening the mouth into both the right ventricle and also left ventricle. And uh, you also have a pulmonary stenosis is what you need to remember. Then what are the four T's you will remember, Dr. Duckley, to cyanosis, cyanotic heart disease, T for tetralogy of fallow. T for transposition of great vessels, T for truncus arteriosus, T for total anomalous pulmonary venous circulation and T for tricuspid atresia. So the five T's that lead to development of cyanosis, you should not forget. Uh, pediatric cardiology is the most interesting part. Uh, some of you are going to be top uh, <coughs> Pediatric cardiologist, a mother brings with a great apprehension that her baby has got a murmur. You will do a 2D echo and reassure her that no, it is, uh, there is no lesion after doing 2D echo and what a great relief. When my second child was born, the resident uh, said, sir, there is a murmur. Oh, let me check where is the murmur. So, when I auscultated, there was a very faint murmur, very faint. I am very sure it is not organic murmur. At least I pray God that it should not be organic murmur. So, until the cardiologist has uh, reviewed with a 2D echo to confirm that it is not, it is a great tension for a parent, any parent. So, there is a reason, doctor, um, how to reveal diagnosis? is an art basically. So, uh, and at the same time you should have a high index of suspicion, there is no wrong. Now doctor, a 4 day old is being brought, decreased capillary fill, short systolic murmur and the infant was placed on a mechanical ventilator and the chest x-ray had been shown to you. Is there any abnormality in this chest x-ray? In any newborn baby, there will be a thymic shadow. Just a thymic shadow is there, don't interpret as an abnormal hilar shadow. It is a normal chest x-ray. So, considering all the clinical presentation given, you can conclude that there is a patent ductus arteriosus which need to be maintained patently. So, that's the reason we need to give intravenous prostaglandin not to maintain the patency. Sometimes whenever cyanotic heart disease is there in a newborn baby, why will cyanosis occur? 
when right sided blood mixes with left sided blood but what is ductus arteriosus what will it connect pulmonary artery with the aorta so uh, can you give me the board please <clears throat> So, typically whenever you are having a cyanotic heart disease, cyanotic heart disease, right sided blood is mixing with left side. But from the left you are getting iota, from the right you are getting pulmonary artery and the two are connected by ductus arteriosus. So, in a cyanotic baby, Presence of ductus arteriosus is advantage or disadvantage? Advantage. Why? The right to left blood is going. Once more, ductus arteriosus will enable left to right for that blood to move. So, that is the reason until cyanosis is corrected, underlying abnormality is corrected, you need to maintain the patency of the ductus. That is the reason you need to maintain the patency is what you need to understand. <clears throat> now, doctor, 16 year old girl is seen in the clinic about a swelling of the thyroid gland. There is an intolerance to the heat and cold. And uh, she also has menstrual problems and her physical examination, what is it showing? A diffuse enlargement of the thyroid which is a goitrous enlargement. And uh, having cold intolerance, what is the meaning of it? And constipation, hypothyroidism. Hypothyroidism? Huh? That is not a... She deny. okay, oh, she does not have any intolerance, no problem. If she didn't have intolerance also, uh, still the... Possibility of a subacute uh, hypothyroidism, subclinical hypothyroidism can be expected, which can be explained by most common cause of a diffuse enlargement is what Hashimoto's thyroiditis is what you need to basically remember. <coughs> Why not? Colloid, it will be hard, nodular goiter, not a diffuse enlargement in case of colloid goiter. Yeah, Hashimoto will not have any lymph nodes. Huh? Hashimoto is uh, lymphocytic infiltration into thyroid. Not always, not necessarily. We see very commonly, anybody who has got a dietary cell enlargement is a Hashimoto. Uh, I think this does not have need to be a little changed, honestly. Hypothyroidism is a better presentation. I think uh, I, uh, I could not see while framing the, uh, adding the image. Uh, I thought uh, that uh, she has no is gone. Uh, instead of she, uh, probably we need to give more hypothyroid features. You are right. Probably question may require a better uh, structuring. Uh, agreed. An obese boy, what do you have here doctor? Agantosis nigricans, which is typically found in the people who are having insulin resistance is what you have to basically remember. <clears throat> A 14 year old scant menstrual periods and her figure is being shown. What is this? Nodulocystic acne and she is also having hirsutism. Then what is the most likely possibility in a teenage girl? Polycystic ovary syndrome is what you have to basically expect. A mother is bringing a five-month-old infant who has a history of diarrhea for few weeks. Perianally, there is an excoriation is what you are seeing. Typical perianal excoriation will be found if uh, there is an acidic stool. And typical acidic stool causing diarrhea out of these various causes would be lactose intolerance is what you need to fundamentally appreciate. A one-year-old is being brought ongoing diarrhea and uh, low grade fever and uh, the stool is tested negative and there is a blunting of the villi. So that is the reason the correct answer would be celiac disease. There was a little error in the 
answer key it is not uh, fruit juice consumption but uh, not fructose intolerance it is a uh, celiac disease which is showing the blunting is what need to be remembered ramya is reporting no audio please uh, help ramya huh? no audio is the audio clear for everybody among the online students is it clear for everybody just check on the earphones then doctor yeah age of presentation for ha huh. there is a pediatric celiac disease pediatric sle pediatric everything of what adults get pediatric lymphoma pediatric brain tumor huh? there is no age group uh, for that there is a pediatric rheumatoid arthritis which is called juvenile rheumatoid arthritis today children are tomorrow citizens no ha huh. then uh, a 17 year old girl is visiting she has been she has seen different uh, practice and emergency departments for diarrhea and vomiting she and her mother are really concerned about her weight loss the vomiting occurred in public places also and her stool are watery and without blood in the last week the stool culture shows no ova but now you have an anxious teen and uh, her endoscopic findings have been given to you so obviously when uh, a relentless diarrhea or a dysentric illness is there a patient will be anxious you can't simply negate by saying that uh, they are anorexia nervosa all the time anorexia nervosa or bulimia nervosa they are all the functional disorders which should be last in the place in your list of differential diagnoses after everything else is ruled out so what is this appearance doctor typical cobble stoning which is a feature of the crohn's disease is what need to be remembered then doctor you are examining a newborn and what are you seeing single palmar crease which is the classical feature which you see in case of down syndrome is what need to be remembered a child was seen she was laughing loud and no apparent reason she is laughing continuously smiling baby right we had one smiling examiner for any answer he was smiling forensic medicine me for any answer you give he was smiling he thought uh, oh, he is a very nice guy he was a sadistic guy he failed 40 people in forensic medicine and gone oh is it uh, what are the other findings in rape oh i see he was smiling we thought oh you are answering heroically so 40 guys he failed and left so uh, all smiles are not uh, benign doctor so angelman syndrome what do you call happy puppet like appearance is the typical nature of appearance a 3 year old has cerebral palsy acute pyelonephritis with urolithiasis and uh, he is very uncooperative banging the head and uh, what do you find self mutilation classical of leschkenihan syndrome and why he is having the acute pyelonephritis and urolithiasis leschkenihan syndrome you have hyperuricemia because of the hypoxanthin born in ribozyle transferase deficiency lead to development of hyperuricemia with self mutilation is what you have to fundamentally remember what is wrong about parthis disease typically parthis is more common in boys not in girls regarding the scabies typically it causes itchiness even when there is no obvious lesion so don't wait for uh, where are the scabitic burrows uh, um, without obvious lesions also it is um, a possibility then uh, what are the various associations congenital heart block is a feature when anti ro antibodies from the mother go to baby when the mother is having sle then that lead to development of the heart block is what you need to basically remember a 6 year old boy has a two week history of being generally unwell there is arthritis widespread rash hanox called in purpurite suspected 
Anoshkalin purpura is a vasculitic purpura, not a thrombocytopenic purpura. That's the reason the platelet count will not be low in vasculitis. Both will lead to purpura. Purpura, if it is palpable purpura, vasculitic. Impalpable petechiae purpurae, they are the feature of thrombocytopenia. That is what you need to appreciate. Then, what is the cause of the downbeat nystagmus? Classically, cheery type 1 malformations. Once more, cheery type 1, type 2. What are the abnormalities? And neural tube defects, spina bifida, myelomeningocele, everything. You must iron out for the tomorrow's exam. Eh? Next, doctor. Babies born to diabetic mothers. What will they typically show? They show jaundice, hypercalce hypocalcemia, hypoglycemia, respiratory distress, etc., etc., are the features. Cardiac arrhythmias will not be found, but congenital heart disease is more commonly found, is what need to be remembered. Hypoglycorrhea, low glucose in CSF, is a feature of bacterial meningitis because bacteria eat sugar candy. Virus don't eat. So that's the reason it is not found in viral meningitis. But what are the two exceptions? Though it is a viral meningitis, you will find the hypoglycorrhea. Typically, you will find it in mums associated meningitis, herpes meningitis. Ye dono mein, oh, viral meningitis hone ke baujud, usme CSF ka glucose will be low, is what you need to basically remember. Hypoxia in the birth. It's a simple guesswork which will generally go wrong if you really guessed it. So, heart rate is the best indicator to know the degree of hypoxia in a newborn at uh, birth is what you need to basically remember. I say standard questions ka standard answers ho na. Exam mein agar kuch aap creatively think karke genius ke jaysa answer kare to genius ka rank mil jayega. Huh? Then, Abdominal radiography is showing a mass which is having calcification. Then, what are the various causes? Neuroblastoma, teratoma, hepatoblastoma. They are all typically the ones which lead to an abdominal mass which will show the presence of calcification classically. Which is that intraocular mass that shows calcification? Retinoblastoma. The only thing that we know in the IA mass lesion is either optic nerve glioma or retinoblastoma. So, retinoblastoma. Calcification is classical. Tonic neck reflex. So, what is the wrong statement about it? Consistently asymmetric tonic neck reflex is not an early sign. It is a late sign of hemiparesis is what you have to basically remember. Grunting respiration in a newborn, what does it suggest? Meconium aspiration. Meconium aspiration um, is what you need to remember, which lead to development of respiratory distress so severely that it lead to the grunting of the respiration classically is what you need to remember. <coughs> then, uh, uh, how about transient tachypnea of newborn or congestive heart failure, etc.? They will have tachypnea, increased heart rate. But grunting means intercostal retraction and expiratory grunt, which are the signs of very severe respiratory distress, are not a feature. Four things, doctor. Hyaline membrane disease in a preterm baby. Meconium aspiration. Then transient tachypnea of a newborn in a baby delivered by caesarean section, which will occur in a full term, preterm, which whose prognosis kaisa hota hai? A three-long term differential diagnosis jo pediatrics mein hai, wo to barabar you have to read. How to differentiate? How will be radiographic appearance of each of them? Everything. After all, tomorrow as a clinician, when you are practicing. It's a day in and day out affair. Even if you are a gynecologist, you must be knowing all these things. Because you will be delivering babies, no? So ultimately, because of your cesarean, if the baby has transient tachypnea of newborn, don't go into a guilt conscious. 
did I create any meconium aspiration in this baby bulke? Transient tachypnea has a very good prognosis. Anybody delivered through cesarean, typically it takes little time before the fluid in the lungs get uh, absorbed. So during that short period of time, there will be a transient tachypnea in a macrosomic baby is what you have to basically understand. Now what are the changes in the rickets? Of all this, the ground glass appearance is a change that you see in scurvy, not in rickets. What are the two most important bone disorders? A, B, C, D, everything about the radiology you must know. Scurvy, rickets. 100%. Pediatrics bole to, ek scurvy or rickets ka x-ray nahi laga hai to, examiner chode ga nahi exam hai. So you must know how to identify the scorbutic rosary. How to identify the epiphyseal widening, narrowing of the space and uh, there are so many named signs in scurvy and uh, rickets, 100% you should be sure. Why not? Increase the distance from the distal end of the radius and ulna to the metacarpal bones, that is found. Metaphyseal widening. Uh, It is a from the distal end of the radius or ulna to the doctor between radius and metacarpal. What is there in the middle? Carpals in the middle. Carpals are there, no? Increased distance from distal end of the radius to metacarpal bones is a uh, measure which is typically increased in case of we are not talking about the radiocarpal oh I understood radiocarpal distance you are thinking no the distance between radius and see there is a cupping of epiphysis because of that what will happen the metacarpal and radius distance will basically increase that is the point but good you brought up the point Right? So, every time we teach, when students do not understand, we become better teacher. Day before yesterday when I am teaching, if you find a positive QRS in the lead one and if you happen to find a negative QRS in the AVF, Typically, it is an example of a left axis deviation. Then somebody asked a question. Sir, you only said that R wave means positive wave. Then how can there be a negative QRS? QRS means R is positive only. Then where is the, what is the meaning of negative QRS? Actually, R is positive and any negative wave following that is S yes wave. If R is positivity is more than the negativity of the S, you call positive QRS. And if the negativity of the S is more than the positivity of the R, then you call negative QRS. But unless the student asked, uh, you will not know. You will think that, uh, oh, everybody understood the class. Students also will say, oh, what a sonorous, musically melodious voice of uh, a good intonation and prosody. And uh, uh, we are enjoying the uh, spontaneity of the uh, flow of the speech. We were not worrying about what is there in the speech. So please worry about what I am talking. Uh, that is important. Then, Kawasaki. Kawasaki typically lead to coronary vasculitis. Can the steroids can help to decrease the risk of developing the coronary vasculitis? is my important question to all of you. They do not decrease. Everything else is true. Right? What is the other name given for Kawasaki disease? Mucocutaneous lymphadenitis is the name which is being given. It leads to coronary vasculitis. It leads to conjunctival uh, congestion and it leads to development of um, um, lesions on the palm, souls, everywhere. Eh? 
So everything on Kawasaki you should read. How do you treat IV immunoglobulin? Is there any role in Kawasaki? If you did this question wrong, just go back to general medicine. Video library. Vasculitis is the topic where we have discussed Kawasaki in uh, rheumatology. For all of you, is the radiology opening or still those who are using online radiology is not opening? Radiology folder. Now we are going to have every Friday radiology class. Yesterday we missed it, but uh, we are going to discuss 26 hours of radiology uh, of all systems, everything. So if you if it doesn't open, please uh, call the helpline and. Uh, uh, Deep is saying it is not opening, Ramya says it is opening, just uh, help out those who still are not having called the helpline. Now bronchial asthma, what is except about it? It is not the pollen allergy most common cause, it is a viral infection which is the most common cause of the asthma. Roseola infantum, what is the wrong thing about it? They are not pruritic. Rosiola infantum lesions are not pruritic. First day, second day, third day, fifth day rash in the pediatric age group. Three, four, three, four points about each of them. Which virus? When will it start? Will it precede fever? Will it occur after fever? Everything you must know. Eh? Then doctor, a five year old developed strider, what is the only possibility? He has swollen the foreign body. Then Cervical cultures, chorea amnionitis and prematurity are due to group B streptococci. Left ventricular hypertrophy is not a feature of L transposition of great vessels. Okay. Can you give me the board please? What is meant by liver transposition of great vessels and what is meant by dextro transposition? Fundamentally, if you take a the left ventricle it is supposed to give rise to iota and right ventricle pulmonary artery. Whenever transposition is there, actually the pulmonary artery iota arises from a common trunk. Common trunk. And the trunk is supposed to develop a septum and divide and allocate iota to ventricle and pulmonary artery to right ventricle. Suppose if it does not do and uh, instead iota arise from right ventricle and pulmonary artery arise from left ventricle, you call it as transposition. But there can be something that God can give another gift. He can create a, a similar non-rotation of the ventricles also. So what, what will happen because of that? Even the left ventricle place is occupied by right ventricle, right ventricle place is occupied by left ventricle and pulmonary artery will go towards the left side so that right ventricle and pulmonary artery are in continuation so that ultimately patient will not get affected. Such a corrected transposition is called as L transposition. Levo transposition, where both there is a transposition of iota pulmonary artery and also transposition of LV and RV, so that effectively it won't affect. Suppose if only the great vessels got transposed and the ventricles are not transposed, then such a thing is called dextro transposition, which is not a corrected anomaly. That is what you need to fundamentally know the difference between the two. Between the two. Now, doctor, what is the best way to prevent neonatal tetanus? To all the expectant mothers, give a toxoid. At least one toxoid should be given to every pregnant woman. That's what SPM cries loudly for you to immunize the mothers. Right? Now, Okay, if we are only talking, our online students will be bored. What is this, sir? So let us check whether online students are sleepy. Deepti, Shazia, Ramya, Pratik. From today onwards, we will ask in the middle, middle some extempore questions, which you can try to give an answer. Follicular lymphoma, Burkitt lymphoma. Tell me what is the chromosomal location. 
translocation each of them. 8, 8, 14, where? Barkita, okay, follicular? 11, 14, eh? because 14, 18. Ah. Annu is saying 11, 22, 18, 14, Shazia says 8, 14, Barkit. 14, 18 is follicular, 8, 14 is burkid, is what you need to remember. Okay. Now, a neonate with an upguard score of 6 and 9 at 1 and 5 is having petit GA on the first day of life. What is the likely possibility? Classically, touch group of infections. Petiche on the trunk in the first day of life is due to a transplacentally transmitted vertical infection like a torch group which can lead to thrombocytopenia. So, you should suspect one of the torch group of infections. Now, a fifth centile weighing 5.5 kg without edema classified as what? Classically marasmus. So, there is a classification which is being given as to how to classify people into quashiorker, marasmus, marasmic quashiorker, and within that the various grades of uh, classification. I leave the literature for you. Since there is no edema, it does not invite quashiorker to be part of it, and uh, marasmus alone will be the concluding diagnosis. Eight month old is having superative. Otitis media, eczematous eruption, easy to bleed when scratched. So, what is the most likely possibility? Wish Catalrich syndrome. What does Wish Catalrich basically contain? Typically, there is an eczema, thrombocytopenia, recurrent sinopulmonary infections. The combination is called Wish Catalrich, is what you need to remember. See, doctor, there are four immunodeficiency disorders. Microbiology mein agar aap nahi padke gaye to exam ko chhodega nahi examiner chhodega nahi Dijorge syndrome lazy leukocyte syndrome job syndrome IgA deficiency Chediac Higashi syndrome primary immunodeficiency disorders in microbiology is a topic chronic granulomatous disease in sab cheezon mein Bacteria infection hota ya virus hota, dono hota, neutrophil mein problem hota ya lymphocyte mein hota, only cell mediated mein hota ya humoral mein hota ya combined hota, ye sab cheeze. Oh, you must be ready doctor. Examination is like getting dressed for going to a party, right? So, that much pleasurably you must uh, dress yourself. No chance that you can slip before the audience. Right? So, my job is to dress you all and send to school. So, you must perform like talwar ke thar ke jese with the razor sharpness of a sword you must uh, win the exam and come back. That should be the goal. And every day when you are losing in a topic, you must go back, review it. Even though you never read it also, you can read now. Because there is a time until October, November. Okay? So, microbiology, Sham jate hi kya karte hai? NITB2medicine.com video library mein, microbiology mein, primary immunodeficiencies bolke topic rehta. Just please do a revision of that. Increased blood dysnophilia is not a feature of GRDSS. Why? Ishnophilia will not occur if the parasite is intraluminal in the gut. All the remaining will come out of the gut into the blood. But uh, it is intraluminal GRDA. That is the reason it is the only parasitic infection which will not uh, stimulate the ishnophilia. Is what you need to basically remember. Coming to the measles simulization. If you give a attenuated vaccine, it will not provide a a, uh, a uh, communicable uh, infection, it will not create. 
communicable infection means if i get a polio vaccine or a measles vaccine i am a vaccinated guy so it is what is still a live organism that live organism will not go and infect the other person and cause the measles in the other person that is the meaning of it got my point i know where you are mistaken you mean to say that uh, the organism will go out uh, multiply in other person acts like a vaccine in the other person create a herd immunity live vaccine so that is where your thought process was going no but examiner's intention is agar koi attenuated vaccine leke kisi aur ke chehre ke upar uh, if he happen to sneeze will other person will get it he won't be infected right that's the point then uh, a neonate has central cyanosis a short systolic murmur on second day of birth what is your diagnosis typically transposition asd vs your anyway cyanotic right cyanotic so transposition also there is a possibility of tof tetralogy of fallow but typically at birth is not uh, more often a feature of tetralogy but more often a feature of transposition it can but it is not common tetralogy of fallow eh? a 12 hour, 12 hour old premature paid in doctors you need to give indomethacin what is the wrong thing about it if the doctors closes once it does not mean that it is closed forever there can be a recurrence of patency once more to happen is what you need to remember coming to the growth if you take skeletal development in boys versus girls boys skeletal development won't occur earlier eh huh? it can't occur earlier then all boys would have been shorter than all girls in the world right so that's the point a 24 month old cannot tricycle when he will do that 36 months delayed bone age is not a feature of familial short stature see bone age is decided by what doctor purely sex hormones if the sex hormone production is early then the bone maturation also will be early and a early bone age will be there if the release of the testosterone and estrogen get delayed bone age also become delayed growth retardation may what are the causes of short stature with uh, advanced bone age shorted shortened bone age with a normal bone age compared to chronological age okay suppose congenital lateral hyperplasia is there they will be start producing for example uh, sex steroids they will have a early bone age early bone age not a retarded bone age early bone age okay so like that so growth retardation topic uh, causes of dwarfism and uh, bone age etc how to differentiate constitutional growth delay from familial short stature from other endocrine causes of growth retardation differences between thyroid hypothyroid dwarfism versus growth hormone deficiency dwarfism ye sab jara sham ko ek meeting laga ke chai pe charcha ho jana hai aur you must be ready in the next exam to correctly answer okay so i'm not repeating i am not going into funda of it to go back into the funda of it it will take another 20 30 minutes the purpose of the subject test is not a uh, topic review which we will do from monday to friday <clears throat> a normal four year can draw a man with head and legs then primary atypical pneumonia caused by mycoplasma ray syndrome is seen if you happen to give aspirin in a viral infection not uh, in a mycoplasma infection as in atypical pneumonia is what you need to remember 